Hello YouTube, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Tina and if you're new here, I post videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. And in today's video, I have two super fun macrame projects that are perfect for beginners. I have to make the disclaimer that this is my first ever macrame project. I've always been a little bit intimidated to start because it seems like a lot of complicated knots and it also takes a little bit of time to understand how the knots all look together to create a cohesive design. So I have not dove into my first wall hanging yet, but I am slowly but surely learning a lot more about macrame. So I'm excited to take you guys all on this journey of me learning macrame and hopefully you guys can learn at home and I hope that these projects inspire you guys to dive into the world of macrame. Before we dive into all the projects I want to say thank you guys all so much for your support and for entering the giveaway in my last video. I'm going to announce the winner at the end of the video so make sure you stay tuned for that. So let's get started with the first project. Hello from voiceover Tina. So I'm so excited to do this first project with you guys because it is my first macrame project ever. And to create these super cute coasters, you're first going to cut your macrame into the following lengths. To start, I am using three millimeter macrame cord and I'm cutting them into one five foot cord and five 30 inch cords. And for a minimal measuring, I am measuring one foot once and then wrapping it around four more times to get approximately five feet. And this does not have to be exact, but I will caution that cutting more is better than cutting less cord. And then the same goes for the 5 30 inch cords. I'm first going to measure out 30 inches once, and then I'm going to use that cord to measure out the remaining four cords. Taking the five foot cord, I am going to create a small loop at the end of the cord, and this is going to be the base cord. This essentially is going to be the cord that all the other smaller cords will be wrapping around. Next, take one of the 30 inch cords and fold it in half, and then pull the end through the cord through the loop. This is called a cow hitch knot or a reverse lark's head knot, so all you wanna do is to pull this tightly and then repeat with the remaining four cords. Now to form the center of the coaster, I'm going to tighten the loop by pulling on the long base cord. And as you can see, this creates a nice radial look with all of the knots. And now comes the fun part with building out the rest of the coaster. So first you wanna take your base cord and move that over to the right of the working cord and make sure that this is always on top of your working cord as you move around the whole piece. Now that your working cord is on the left hand side, create a number four over the base cord and then take the end of the working cord and loop it through the hole created and pull. Repeat this step one more time to create a double half hitch knot. And once you've done that, you can move on to the next cord with the same exact steps. So you wanna place the base cord on top of the next cord, take that working cord over the base cord to create a number four, and then pull through the loop, and repeat that one more time before moving on to the next cord. After working around all those cords once, you will notice a small gap. And to fill that, cut out a shorter piece of macrame. This one is 26 inches, and then create another cow hitch knot. Remember to place this cord under the base cord and then pull through the end. And depending on how large that gap is, you can go ahead and add more than one piece of cord. After each time you fill a knot, you can go ahead and take that base cord and continue creating the double half hitch knots to the rest of the cords. And with each cord that you add to fill in the gaps, you can go ahead and make those a little bit shorter to save on some macrame. And while you work on this coaster, you will begin to notice that the base cord is essentially spiraling around and all the smaller cords are creating loops around it to create a circular shape for the coaster. And one super important detail that I want to note here is that the macrame thickness is super important to make one of these coasters. I would recommend the three millimeter macrame because I tried to do the same project with four millimeter macrame and it was just way too big. It did not look right at all. So learn from my mistakes and stick with the three millimeter. And once you get the hang of these knots, this goes by super quickly and you can even watch like a TV show or another YouTube video while you're working on this. It really does fly by so fast when you're working around the whole spiral. Since I'll be using these coasters for mugs, I kept creating the knots until it measured about four inches in diameter. 
And once you get to this point, you can go ahead and knot the base cord back into the coaster and then cut it to become one of the fringe pieces. To make things a little bit easier, I cut down the cords a bit before moving on to the fringe. And to create the fringe, I like to unravel each piece first and then go in with a comb to brush out each strand. And as you can see, while you're doing this, the fringe fluffs up a lot. To finish up the coaster, I'm going to clean this up and cut the fringe so that it's equal all around the whole thing. And I kept my fringe at about one inch. And after that's cut, the coaster is ready to be used. These coasters add so much coziness to my space and they are a great addition to any boho themed room. I especially love these for my coffee table. They look so cute under my mugs. And I also think if you made these in a larger size, this could look really awesome as wall decor if you just hung them up. This next project is something that I've been wanting to create for a while and I'm really excited to share it with you guys. So first with a six millimeter macrame cord, we are going to cut them to size. And here you can see that I'm just laying out my rope and arranging it into the size that I want to be to create a cactus shape. And since my piece is going to be quite small, my two pieces of macrame came out to be eight inches and 15 inches. But depending on how large or how small your piece turns out to be, the sizes can vary. For the color of this cactus, I'm going to use a super thin yarn in sage. And the yarn that I have is almost like embroidery floss, but you can use whatever you have. For a larger piece, I think that standard yarn would look really great. Next, I'm going to wrap my macrame with my colored yarn. And I'm starting off with the shorter piece of macrame first and taking one end of the yarn and aligning it with the macrame cord. And then I'm going to start wrapping it around that. This step is going to be the most tedious part of the whole entire project, and since my yarn is very thin, this took me quite some time to complete. But I found that it was easiest just to twist my macrame cord to get the yarn to wrap around it, and when I got towards the end of the rope, I made sure that it matched the other end and looped a knot to finish it. Once I completed the shorter piece, I moved on to the longer cord, and it was about at this point that I wished I used a thicker yarn instead of this thin one, but I powered through and got both pieces wrapped. Now I'm going to take the shorter piece and use that as the inner portion of the cactus. All I did was fold it in half and made sure that the ends were even and then hot glued it together. I would also recommend to use a needle and the yarn to stitch these pieces together for a more finished look, but I, for some reason, don't have a sewing kit, so I'm just going to use hot glue instead, but feel free to use whatever you have at home. After that inner portion has cooled off, I'm going to move on to gluing the outer portion, and I'm first going to glue the two bottom ends first, and then I'm going to glue the very top of the outer portion, and then I let that dry. Now to create the arms of the cactus, I'm going to work in small sections by gluing down the bottom piece first. And then I made sure to create my desired shape before I glued down the cord in each section. And this is super important so that you get the right outline for the cactus. And you also want to be very careful when you glue these all together so that it doesn't seep to the front side. But if you're stitching these all together, you do not have to worry about that. And I think in the future, when I do this project again, I'm going to try stitching them together instead of gluing them. Once you perfect the shape of your cactus, it's time to move on to the finishing touches. Since my macrame cord was already very unraveled at the bottom, I didn't really have to create some fringe, but this will vary for everyone, so feel free to comb it out if you need to. But I thought this looked fine the way it was, so I did not have to comb it out at all. And to make the bottom fringe even, I took my scissors and did a blunt cut across the bottom. Now to hang this up, I'm going to use my 3mm macrame cord and split it in half. And this will really help me out since the holes in my bead are very tiny. So I'm going to use washi tape to tape the two ends together and then string it through my wood beads. I finished this part off with a knot and then glued it to the back of the cactus. And now it's ready to be hung. This cactus makes me so happy when I look at it, and this project is really something that you can create as large or as small as you want it. You can make an even smaller version of this project to use as a keychain or even as a charm for your car. There are so many ways that you can customize it to fit your own personality, and I hope that you guys have fun creating this project. 
All right, guys, so that was all for today's video. I hope that you guys liked the projects, and I hope that these really inspired you guys to work with macrame cord. I feel like this is gonna be such a fun new hobby to pick up. I have so many spools of macrame cord, so let me know in the comments down below what projects you wanna see, because I definitely have some ideas for future videos, but I also wanna hear your suggestions as well. Before I close out this video, I wanna announce the winner of the last giveaway for 10,000 subscribers, and that is to Laura Bustos. So congratulations, Laura. I will be reaching out to you on how you can get your gift card. And if you didn't win this time, don't worry guys, I will have more giveaways in the future. So please look out for those. But even since that last video, we have grown so much. So I'm so excited to make more videos for you guys. And with that being said, don't forget to like this video if you learned something new, subscribe if you haven't already, and also follow me on Instagram because I'm posting on there every single day. That's it for today's video. Stay inspired and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.